New York is a collection of villages. The old have been in charge since before the revolution. Until the new people invaded. HBO's The Gilded Age features a who's who of Tony Award-winning Broadway stars, including Audra McDonald, Christine Baranski, Cynthia Nixon, and Kelly O'Hara. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. You've done a lot in your career, but I feel like this is the first time you've been a part of a TV show that everyone is sort of talking about every week and it's building buzz and it really, it's kind of like part of the conversation, the, what we used to call the water cooler conversation, right? right? Well, you know, I, I, I don't let myself get too big headed about that because I think, is it what everyone's talking about or just our community because it is packed full with all of our friends, right? But the ratings, the ratings are there. People, people are eating up the Gilded Age. I mean, there's something about this show that people are really ready for this story right now. You know, as we were unfolding the script last, in the last two years, really, um, I started to think, ooh, it's grossly timely. You're, you're right about not being part of that type of thing in most of my career. You know, Broadway has been, and theater it is and will always be sort of my main love. But I, I cannot tell you what a gift this has been, not only because it is something that we were able to do over this pandemic, but also because I feel like it's like this part of theater as well, and yet it's a television show. That's what it felt like in, in, in a way. It was all my friends. For the first time, I sort of felt like I fit in in a television show, where I usually, when I do TV, I'm always like, ooh, this is you know foreign territory. And this time, it felt really at home, so it was great. We know that you know how to rock a period gown. You've done that before. We've seen that many times on Broadway. So let's talk about Aurora. She, we don't love her right off the bat. She's icy, she's a society lady. She is not welcoming necessarily, but I, I feel like I'm seeing little hints that she might warm up a little. You know, it's so funny with television um, and episodic television. It's it's not like theater or a, or a play. It's not where you have this arc and you go in and you, you know the backstory and you know the ending. We are living moments in this show. And so I don't, I cannot tell you honestly what they intended for Aurora, but what I know is what I want for Aurora. You know, we put it upon ourselves to sort of build that as we play it. And my hope and my fantasy is that as he's writing it, which he was writing it as we shot, you know, we didn't have all of this, the episodes of, of the 10 episodes, right. that they start to, that they start to see something that might just live on the edge a little bit for, for this society woman, because I want her to have that. But I really desperately want, as we go forward, for Aurora to be surprising and not yeah. just typical. I, I don't want that. You called the wrong number. You have to call back. I feel like the accidental wolf was sort of a great bridge, mm -hmm. right? Bet between your theater work and, and now your TV work. And because that started as a short film and now you're about to shoot a third season, right? Of this of this show now. I think the gift that Ari and Moye gave me from that, we did King Lear together, it was 2012. Um, he, he didn't know me as a musical theater person. He'd never seen me in a musical, never heard me sing. And so those little things that happen in life where you just come across somebody who's willing to uh, make all these efforts towards something. And I learned so much about camera. I learned so much about, you know, being on set and in those spaces. It's almost like I, I need, I had to have that before I could have anything else. And he, the fact that they're happening at the same time now being, you know, this season number two is released at the same time. And to be honest, we've shot season three and it's my favorite. Um, it, it really has been an enormous, uh, a gift that I don't think was an accident. You recently shared a photo of you in Follies that I loved, of you as one of the, the showgirls in Follies. What what do you think when you look back at that girl and, and how much that girl's been able to accomplish in, in these what? 20 20 years? You're a good you're good at your job. I just almost got a little tear in my eye when you look <laughs> back at that girl. I had no idea what my th future was in this town. I had come out of my first Broadway show pretty down. It was not mm -hmm. what I expected. And then I joined this group of really, really beautiful people. And I just remember thinking, if it's like this, I am more, I am everything I risked and everything I sacrificed, leaving my family and having no, no connections 
it, it's all happening right here. And you know, if I have never have anything else, that's okay. And I didn't even understand when we were not a success. I didn't even understand because to me, it was the most beautiful experience of my life. And we can also tell you HBO has just picked up The Gilded Age for a second season. New episodes from season one are streaming now on HBO Max with the season one finale airing March 21st.